perpetual night. That's what we are headed for. Where every heart melts as the black forces of chaos consume us all. But we have a shot. One arrow of deliverance. I am Rook, High Archer of the Grey Elves. And these are the trials of strife. See Rook pushing up right here. Malady could initiate though. Rook is in some trouble. Grapple shot away. He's going to be fine for now. But Bo is chasing. Bo wants this kill. Nice invulnerability coming out right there. One more auto attack needed. He's in tower range. Going to have to fall back. And it's going to be a first blood on the Bo right there. That's unfortunate. Yeah, he got a little bit too aggressive there. But you see his lane mate, Malady, is back by the tower. And you see those little crosses pop up. Yeah. That actually represents out of combat regeneration, which allows players to kind of stick around a little bit more and get massively increased regeneration and it triggers automatically after you don't take damage or deal damage for a certain amount of time. Yeah, you see both sides even taking advantage of that right there. Rook currently still in that out-of-combat regeneration. Bo coming back into the lane, though. He is pissed off with the fast resurrection timer as well as being able to get to the lane pretty quickly right here. He wants a counter kill. Stun going to come out from Caprice, but Bo doesn't care. He wants this counter kill still. Will it be Rook? Will it be Caprice? It looks like Caprice is going to be that target of choice. Malady goes in right there. Can Caprice actually get away? It doesn't look like it. Malady takes her out. Nice counter kill. Uh, so one thing you probably noticed uh, while watching that video is the games are pretty action-packed. Um, our map is smaller than other MOBAs, uh, and what that does is it just means that banking is a lot more prevalent. Uh, you know, travel times are shorter, uh, it's easier to do things as, as a team. Uh, so really that just ends up making the game uh, a lot more action-packed and uh, more about teamwork than individual. So the first thing you're going to see when you log in uh, is the option to either play an easy or difficult pop match. Caprice's story. So for those of you who aren't as familiar with MOBAs, Caprice's story is kind of a short uh, campaign mission that will teach you the very basics of playing MOBA. So it will teach you all the controls, um, how to use your abilities, uh, everything you really need to know to uh, start to succeed. And it kind of, you'll see when you play the game that we take our lore a lot more seriously in this game. Uh, rather than just being a tutorial, it's actually kind of part of the story of one of the characters and how they've come to the arena. And um, this is actually just the first part of what's going to be uh, a multi-part uh, series of short campaign missions that will be released on beta. Um, however, if you are a more experienced player, you know, feel free to jump right into a bot match like we're going to do right now. So the first thing you're going to see when we get to the lobby is the hero big screen. And you'll notice immediately uh, we have splash art for all of our heroes. Um, we take our art pretty seriously uh, for this game. We really think it's important uh, for communicating the personality of our heroes. You can see right here we have uh, Minerva. This is one of our, this is our 1v1 kind of assassin female character. Um, we've got all kinds of different characters. We have Vex, he's a great ganger. We've got Rook, he's kind of one of our agile range damage dealers. We've got Bastion, he's a uh, kind of our like uh, prophetic uh, boy of the dragon character. He's a big tank, uh, very, very very powerful. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump into one of these characters. I'll go ahead and play Minerva. She's one of my favorites. Um, so one thing you'll immediately notice when you jump in to after you pick a hero is we have multiple gear sets for each hero. And this is pretty common for these games. Um, but we've gone one step further with the customization for visuals. And on top of uh, being able to pick gear sets, you can actually also change the color scheme of the hero. So you'll see if I pick this hero, um, I actually have different die sets for each one. And these just allow the players to really uh, customize their visuals a little bit more, so that you might not, you know, if you might get into a game, you say, okay, well, it's cool to have this gear set, I feel pretty unique and special, but at the end of the day, you're gonna see, you know, plenty of other people with the same gear set, so they won't get popular. What the guys allow you to do is really kind of personalize the character and say, yeah, well, you might have the same gear set as me, but I'm always the one running around as pink Minerva, or I'm the one playing as orange Minerva. Uh, and it really just allows you to, again, you know, really personalize your visuals. Um, so we'll go ahead and I'll go with, go with this one. Uh, the next thing you'll see is you have what's called pet selection. So Q was talking earlier about one of the goals in Strike is to allow us to have less content in terms of number of heroes, but still have lots and lots of flexibility uh, for the players and how they're playing. So 
So when you go to a game of Strife, you actually choose both a hero and a pet. And the pet actually gives your hero additional abilities and passives to kind of push your direction. You push your hero a little bit in a different direction. So you might say, okay, well, I'm playing the Nerva. Um, she's a great 1v1 assassin burst damage hero, but she kind of runs out of mana, and she has mana issues. Well, to help with that, I'm going to pick Nubis. He's kind of one of our pastor pets. He helps with mana issues, he makes my skulls deal more damage, and stuff like that. Or if you go in a completely different direction and say, instead, I'll pick Horus. He's kind of uh, one of our more defensive pets. He grants bonus HP, he also has some other defensive properties, and since she is kind of a squishier character, that might help for players who maybe don't want to feel quite as knife edge as another character. Uh, me, personally, I'm more of a risky player, so I'd go with uh, Nubis. Go ahead and jump right into the game. Alright, so without going too much into the item system, for those of you familiar with Bobas, you'll know that the first thing you do when you get in the game is you buy your starting items. Go ahead and buy your starting items. And then we'll go to lane. Um, for those of you who've played Mobile before, it'll seem pretty familiar to you, the layout of the map. You look, you've got top lane, then you've got middle lane, and then you've got your bottom lane. Uh, this is a pretty standard uh, layout for MOBAs. Um, it works, and for a lot of reasons. Uh, the only real difference here is that our map is a bit smaller. Uh, you'll notice between our lanes, we have what's called the jungle. And we actually visually have different sections of the jungle. So here we've got our kind of jungle area, and then it transition into more of a graveyard theme. And then over here, we've got kind of a cave mountain area, and then a kind of swampy uh, theme. And the idea here is that not only does it kind of add more entry seconds. it adds more entry visually, so, you know, it's more fun to... And I kind of noticed that, you know, things are starting to change. I'm getting into this different area. You might realize, okay, well, I'm probably getting into the enemy's area of the map, but it really just helps uh, you know, guide the players as they're playing, rather than have the entire map kind of follow one visual theme. Visual theme. So it looks like the creeps have spawned, and we'll lay some lanes. I'm landing up here with Rook, uh, and we'll go ahead and get the thing started. So one thing Pew was talking about is our last hitting system. So, or he was talking about uh, making things, making players fight less over resources. So you'll notice that when I get to the lane, even if I don't get the last hit in the creep, you'll see right here, even if I don't get the, get the last hit, as long as my ally gets the last hit, I'll still get half the gold. So you'll see uh, as soon as you get the last hit. I didn't get that, that creep kill, but I still got 30 gold. Now, one of us still has to get the last hit. It's not that we just automatically get the gold. He has to get the creep, or I have to get the creep, but we're working together to get that gold, instead of just one person doing it. So, So here, if I'm, get, if I'm able to get this creep, I get 30 gold, but he would also get 30 gold for that. However, if we miss a creep, neither of us would get the gold. So there's still that tension of, uh, of us fighting over the gold. Well, but we're working together to get the gold. Um, another mechanic in the game is, uh, or one of the goals of the game is to make the game a lot more uh, fast-paced and have less downtime, you don't have to go back to heals often. You'll notice once I've gotten out of combat for a while, I have these green and blue icons above my head. That basically means I have out of combat regeneration, and that gives my hero a multiplier on all my regeneration. So as long as I stay out of combat a bit, I can regenerate without having to go all the way back to the base. So hopefully I'll be able to rely on my ally to get last hits for me, but he's not very good, so he's not doing it very well. We're kind of getting crushed right now, but that's okay. Alright, so you'll see my gold down here. At some point I've acquired uh, 600 gold. And you'll notice when I first started the game, I started building uh, my first item, Surgery. So I bought the first uh, components for the item, and now I want to finish the recipe. Um, so one thing in our game, uh, again, going along with making the game more fast-paced, less downtime, less having to run all the way back to the base and heal, uh, we wanted to give players couriers to help them be able to buy their items without going back to base. So if I go ahead and finish this item, 
you'll notice the item goes into my stash right here. That basically means that I bought the item, but it's back at base. You know, I'm away from base. However, to bring it to myself, I can just click this one button, and you'll see on the, on the mini map we have this icon, and it's actually a little courier bringing the icon, bringing the map down by item. And so every player in the game has their own courier, so there's no fighting. You don't say, okay, you know, stop using the courier, I need you guys. There's no arguments over that, but everyone has their own courier, and you'll see once he gets to me, and my inventory and my item will combine, and I'll have my fish side. Another thing he was talking about is making the game, making the, the roles for the game less rigid. Um, and along with that goes making support players, making support a lot more fun to play. So we've kind of redefined what it means to play support. Um, part of that was honestly just done with our last lane mechanics. So even if you're playing your support character, you're getting gold because um, when you're in lane, even if you're getting all the last hits to your you know, damage dealer, you're still getting part of that gold. I'm not sure why he's doing that. It's kind of a theory. Um, along with that, is we actually don't have purchasable wards in the game. So if you guys have played uh, MOBAs before, you'll be uh, familiar with the concept of wards. So you'll see if I go over here, I don't have vision of this area of the map. I wouldn't know if enemies are moving around here. However, in other games, you buy wards that you basically place down and give you vision. Instead, in our game, we have these things called watchtowers. When you walk next to a watchtower, it actually reveals the area around here. And then when you walk away, it stays lit for 30 seconds. And so what this does is rather than warding, I'm not going with this one. <laughs> rather than warding being about sacrificing your money as a support player, it's something your team does as a group to, to you know give vision as you need it. So each region of the map has has watchtowers. You got one here. You got one over here that lights up this area. You got one down here that lights up this area. And another one down here. Um, so I could go on for a while about a lot, a lot of the different mechanics. If you guys are watching the video closely, you'll notice we have our uh, Kratos. He's one of our map team objectives. He's really important for pushing the enemy base in. We also have Ball Deer. Down here, I'll go ahead and help my team do this. He's a responding boss that you fight. Uh, that just gives your entire team uh, gold experience. Even if he goes on Ball, he gives gold experience. He's a little easier to kill than uh, Kratos than over here. At least some Kratos is a lot harder. And like you guys saw in the video, when you, you're actually fighting someone called Sidara, she's the person you fight. When you defeat Sidara, Kratos uh, gets unleashed and leaps up in the air and then a minute later will spawn for your team and push down one of your lanes, as you guys saw in the video. Um, and yeah, so like I was saying, this is just kind of a quick demo into the game. Rather than me playing the entire game out, I'd rather just get you guys involved with playing. If you have any questions, um, feel free to ask me. I'll be walking around, I'll stay here. And uh, yeah, so I'd say we go ahead and get you guys playing the game.